This is Deep Dive. I'm Sui. Make no mistake, Xinjiang is famous for its food. Mouth-watering lamb skewers with local spices, sweet melons and grapes that burst with juice and flavors are just a few local stars. These are items that one would expect from an inland region with grassland and abundant sunshine. But now Xinjiang is making headlines for its local seafood, namely shrimps, trout, lobsters, and crabs, which we thought only come from coastal regions. Here in Xinjiang's Bohu County, we are farming shrimps, so people in Xinjiang can enjoy more affordable shrimps. Look at this. This is trout from Xinjiang. It's so big and beautiful. This one is about four kilograms. We are now at a trout farming base in Nyoka County in Xinjiang. What's special about Xinjiang seafood? Why did Xinjiang go through all the trouble to farm fish, crabs, and shrimps? And more importantly, for our lovely foodies out there, how do they taste? For this, I spoke with my colleague Guo Yan. This episode is brought to you on Thursday, September 14th. Uh, so Guo Yan, seriously, is something I've never heard of. Xinjiang is far in the inland region of China. The Gobi Desert is there. So now you tell me there's seafood shipped out of from there. So how is that possible? What kind of seafood? Well, Xinjiang has been a big producer of aquatic products, including seafood, in China for many years. I started to notice this ten years ago. That was the first time I traveled to Xinjiang, and a local resident treated us with a meal full of fish. I thought he would treat us with some、uh, lamb skewers、mm-hmm. or barbecue, which are popular cuisine by locals. I was so surprised that he treated us with a lot of fish:、mm. steamed fish, fried fish,、um, stewed fish, fish soup. Locals call the meal "all fish meal."、Mm-hmm. This is the first time that I realized that Xinjiang cultivate cold water fish, and.、Um, A few months ago, in May, I traveled to a region in the southern part of Taklamakan Desert, which is the largest desert in China. And、uh, I talked with a friend who is currently working in Xinjiang. He told me that in Naxu, a place that is renowned for its sweet apples,、right. it has started to breed white leg shrimp、mm. imported from South America, and、uh, in Kashgar. They started to foster lobsters imported from Australia, and in some river valleys in Ili, which is renowned for its beautiful sceneries, some local farmers started to cultivate salmon imported from Norway for decades.、Mm-hmm. Very、mm-hmm. amazing. I mean, the, the the places you name remind me of the traditional Xinjiang cuisine, but it's very amazing that、mm-hmm. they produce seafood, fish. How is that possible? What makes this possible is that many areas of the vast region are rich in water resources.、Hmm. Many people may not,、uh, who never traveled or lived in Xinjiang, may find it a, a little bit novel to think about water resources in such a landlocked area.、Uh, Xinjiang lies at the heart of a huge continent. The location on Earth that is farthest from any open sea is in Xinjiang,、mm. so it's natural for people to think about that there would be no water resources in Xinjiang. But the fact is that Xinjiang has some huge mountain ranges, for example, Altai, Kunlun, and Tianshan, which is one of the largest mountain ranges in the world. And the top of the mountains are covered by glacier. Actually, Xinjiang has the largest storage of glacier in China, and when temperatures rise, the ice and snow on top of the mountains will melt, and the water will flow down from the mountains into the lakes and rivers. They offer very important source of cold water for marine animals. This region sees less precipitation and stronger evaporation compared with. Eastern regions, and so the lakes and rivers in the region contains higher level of salt, which pretty like the conditions in ocean、mm. for these animals. And the cold and salty water help these marine animals to survive and grow well. And also, the water quality in Xinjiang is premium. The water and the ecological environment is well protected, and the water, the lakes, the rivers are pretty clean and clear. 
So tell us about the technology involved in this、uh, fishing activities in Xinjiang. It's amazing to create an ocean-like marine environment in an inland region. Advanced technologies in aquaculture help simulate marine environment for、um, inland regions. I would like to draw an example in which an organic agriculture company cultivates marine animals in a river valley in Xinjiang. The company has a breeding center for salmon in a small county in Yili Prefecture. The company imported 1.6 million fish eggs from Denmark last year and plans to produce. Three thousand tons of fish by the end of next year. They created a breeding system to increase the survival rate of the fish. They installed net cages which can resist strong wind and waves deep in the river valley. And also, the installation in the cages are used to collect waste and excrement from the fish to make sure the breeding procedure is environmentally friendly. And、um, Some robots are used to work underwater to clean the cages,、mm. and the company teamed up with some universities and institutions from the coastal areas to modify their breeding techniques and increase their productivity. The general manager of the company said they earned twenty thousand yuan in twenty twenty by selling the fish. They expect their earnings will double in twenty twenty three. And another case I want to mention here is that they use a technology similar to、um, the greenhouse.、Mm. The greenhouse farmers use to grow vegetables and、uh, some fruits. Earlier, I talked with a professor whose name is Li Yuqun. He is the vice dean of the School of Marine Science and Engineering of Qingdao Agricultural University.、Mm. Um, he told me that they build kind of greenhouses. On some saline soils, and then、uh, dig some ponds. We can build a saline pond, and then we can use the sun to cool the air. We can build some greenhouses on areas that are covered by salty soils. These structures come with a system to manage light and temperature, and we also have equipment to regulate oxygen levels in the pond. And also in Aksu. A manager of a breeding base of white leg shrimps says they use modern techniques to have the spawns from South America to gradually adapt to fresh water. I also know somebody working in the fishing business.、Uh, mm-hmm. He told me it's more difficult、uh, than we might think to run a fishery, which involves lots of、uh, delicate maintenance work. So I guess it's harder. It's even harder in the inland regions.、So、what are the、uh, challenges for these companies? Well, the first challenge is temperature. For some marine animals, temperature is very important. The cold water fish, for example, the salmon, could only survive and grow well in a temperature ranging between ten degrees to twenty degrees.、Mm. But the problem is that many inland areas, such as Xinjiang, has a continental climate,、mm-hmm. which is characterized by hot summer and cold winter, and its temperature could range not just within the year but also within the day. And here comes the problem: How can the farmers keep the temperature stable within the day,、mm. within the month, a year to? Help these、uh, baby shrimps or fish to grow well. And for example, in summer, when temperatures rise, these fish will lose appetite for eating.、Mm-hmm. That would hinder their growth. And another big challenge here is inbreeding. Inbreeding is still a problem, which means that the fish are probably they are siblings or relatives,、mm-hmm. and、uh, that will limit the varieties of the fish and harm the. You know, good quality of the fish, and another problem here, as I was told by the professor I interviewed,、uh, is ill management, because in many parts of the inland region,、uh, people only get to know marine animals. Maybe a few years ago, after they built infrastructures, they imported the breed, they imported the seeds of the fish into the area. To learn new knowledge, to learn the procedure of management. Effective management is crucial. For instance, in many inland areas, local people have little knowledge about aquaculture. It takes time for them to learn and gain experience. 
the adjustment of the micro elements in the water is also complicated. Collaboration between inland and coastal regions is important. Coastal regions have rich experience in marine animal cultivation and advanced technologies. Academic institutions and schools can play a role in training talent for companies in the inland areas. Some coastal provinces, like Shandong, have various projects to help the western region develop aquaculture. So, considering all these factors,、mm-hmm. like temperature, local environment,、mm-hmm. and personnel, does the seafood there taste differently, or maybe better? Well, according to my experience, I couldn't tell the difference because they taste almost the same.、Okay. Personally, I really love the fish there,、um, especially roasted fish.、Mm-hmm. And the taste of the fish, according to some experts,、uh, depends on the quality of base for the fish. Depends on what the fish eat. Right. So, talking about the set of technologies, how adaptive is this set of technologies? I mean, does it require a large amount of adaptation when it's applied in other places beyond the Xinjiang? Well, according to Professor Li Yuchun from the Qingdao Agricultural University, this method could be applied to some other inland areas with similar geographical conditions with Xinjiang.、Mm. I think the most important part is that these areas that could use this method could should have some natural advantages. For example, cold water,、mm-hmm. uh, salty lakes. I think that's the premise, and、uh, technology is only.、Um, Help them to grow these marine animals. We we cannot depend on technology a hundred percent. So the whole system must not be cheap, especially for a local local farmer. So how about the cost? I mean, can fishermen actually earn a profit by using this method? Aquaculture has become a new growth point for local economy in many places in Xinjiang. The output value of the fishery sector in Xinjiang reached over four billion yuan, or six hundred million U.S. dollars, in 2022, increasing nine hundred million yuan from 2019. It's good.、Mm. And this in- fishery industry also increased new job opportunities. It also brings new opportunities for the tourism industry because many foodies like me、mm-hmm. who love Xinjiang fish would travel there. All right. I understand one end market for、uh, those seafood from Xinjiang is Jiangsu. I, I mean, far in the east, and I, I mean by the coast. So, is the logistics an issue?、Uh, you talk about Jiangsu. Jiangsu is not their target market. It's not their number one target market.、Okay. The target consumers for the seafood companies from Xinjiang are local residents、oh, okay. and residents from some surrounding areas. The infrastructure in Xinjiang is very good.、Mm. I traveled there many times, and I found that the roads, bridges, expressways, highways are well built,、mm-hmm. and、uh, that connect the inland areas with the rest of China、uh, very nicely. But the problem is that China is so big.、Mm-hmm. As the distance extends, the cost of logistics will rise,、mm-hmm. and. For seafood, we'd better eat them as fresh as possible. So I think it's good for the inland areas to grow seafood because the local residents have the opportunity to eat this seafood freshly. Right. Still, how is this possible for projects like this? I mean, breeding fish and shrimps in inland regions to be this consuming in terms of money,、mm-hmm. technology, and time to work successfully. Actually, the the fishing sector or aquatic product sector in Xinjiang have gained support from the central government.、Mm-hmm. According to official data, this year Xinjiang got eighty million yuan financial support from the central government. That's roughly ten million U.S. dollars. Actually, China has been making efforts to utilize the saline soils,、mm-hmm. and in Xinjiang, Qinghai. And Sichuan, which are landlocked areas in China, there are a lot of land that are not suitable for growing vegetables and fruits because the salt level in the soils is pretty high. In this case, if the seafood industrial chain could prosper in these regions, the local farmers will have more 
incomes. So, also you already named several places. I mean, in the inland region of China, like、mm-hmm. Qinghai, like Sichuan. So, how popular is this business model in inland China? Are there any other places besides Xinjiang to breed fish and、uh, shrimps? Just as I have mentioned, that in Qinghai and、uh, the western part of Sichuan,、mm. and also parts of Chongqing, is also a municipality in China. I remember the the professor told me that in the year two thousand, which is twenty three years ago, his team went to Chongqing to help local farmers breed crabs.、Mm-hmm. The water there was salty. And、uh, they have some cold, salty water. Local farmers could barely earn any profits by growing crops、mm. because you know saline soils. Like it's not very arable for farmers. His team went to Chongqing to help local farmers to cultivate some aquatic products, and which proved to be quite successful. So、uh, China has a long coastline and number of superb nearshore fishing plants. And we also know its offshore fishing capacity is also strong. And besides these, China is a major import destination of seafood. So why does it still need these inland seafood fisheries? The demand is very huge. According to OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, China is the largest fish producer, and it will remain by far the world's largest fish-consuming country.、Mm. And according to FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, in China, per capita consumption of aquatic foods. Grew from four kilograms in 1961 to 40 kilograms in 2019.、Mm. It's about ten times、uh, higher. Behind the growth momentum, there are、uh, two driving forces. One is changing dietary habits of Chinese residents. Also, the rising incomes、mm-hmm. of the residents in middle and western part of the country. And、uh, the seafood, like the, the salmon, which has been bred in Ili valleys,、mm-hmm. fish is a concentrated source of protein and many other essential fatty acids and micronutrients. And Chinese residents' diet habits have changed. They want something more healthy. Mm. Mm-hmm. So this is apparently it's a, it's a growing market and has a very、uh, prosperous. Perspective in the future. How competitive is this business in China? I mean, considering, like you mentioned, Chinese people's growing appetite for quality aquatic seafood, and also the pandemic-induced disruptions to、uh, global seafood trade routes. The disruptions on the global supply chain, I think, is the impact has gradually dwindled、mm-hmm. as the transportation, the global supply chain has recovered. I think the business there has embraced new opportunities. As Japan started to discharge contaminated water into the sea,、mm-hmm. that has provoked the residents living in coastal areas in China. Many express their concerns on various social media platforms. They they worry about the safety of seafood because China and Japan are close neighbors,、mm-hmm. and、uh, you never know what the radioactive water will do to our health.、Mm-hmm. In fact, technology utilizing salt and alkali in the soil and water has been widely used in many inland regions in China. Gansu, a province neighboring Xinjiang, is also expecting to harvest thousands of kilograms of white-legged shrimps. This August, a new white-legged shrimp farm started construction in Inner Mongolia. It's expected to produce 1,200 tons of shrimps a year upon completion. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Deep Dive. If you like what you just heard, don't forget to follow us on your podcast platform. Just search for Deep Dive. You can also leave comments to tell us what you want to know about China and beyond. This episode is brought to you by me, Su Yi, and my colleagues Fei Fei, Li Yunqi, Zhang Zhang, and Qi Zhi. Special thanks to CGTN radio reporter Guo Yan. I will see you in the next one.